Hello and welcome to lesson three of my Swift tutorial for beginners video series. Now that you know all about variables, constants, and data types, it's time to start having some fun. In this lesson, we're going to talk about a staple construct that exists in all programming languages in some form or another. And yes, I'm talking about the if statement. Let me show you what they're all about. So the reason I'm so excited to show you how to use if statements is because starting from now, you're going to be able to write code that can make its own decisions. You're going to be able to write some app logic. So why don't we start here with a constant and we're just going to use a letter A, we'll say A equals 10. And I'm going to print a string down here. Let me just open up the console so we can see something. And I want to say, uh, Let's say a is less than 10. Or how about a is less than, yeah, I'll do a is less than 10. Now this is going to print regardless, right? Because, I, well, first of all, I have to run my playground. So there we go, a is less than 10. Well, this actually isn't true, right? Because a is 10, so it's not actually less than 10. And in this case, I don't want this to show up. Well. The problem is that that line of code is there, right? So it's going to be run and it's going to show up. What we can use here is an if statement. So we can add a condition and we can say that we only want to run this print statement based on some sort of condition that we can test. So let's see how we can do this with an if statement. So it all starts with the if keyword followed by a space and then your condition, which you're going to test. I'll show you how to write that condition in just a second. But for now, let's continue with the rest of the if statement. Then you're gonna have a space and then you're going to have a set of braces or some people call it curly brackets. Inside those braces, you're going to have the code that is only going to be run if the condition equates to true. If that condition turns out to be false, then the code inside of your braces will not be run. So now let's jump back to the playground and see this in action. So I'm going to use the if keyword here followed by a space and the condition that we want to test is, is a less than 10, right? So we're going to do a, and this is the less than operator. It's going to check is the left side less than the right side. So on the left side, we've got a on the right side, we're going to put 10, right? Followed by a space. And then we're going to open up, an opening brace and I'm going to go under the print statement and close that brace and then press tab here. So we've got uh, our line of code inside of an opening and closing brace. And this is our condition here. So it actually doesn't matter if you want to put your brace down here or up, up here, just make sure there's a space uh, in between your opening brace and your condition. Now let's try to run our code. I'm going to press this blue button here this time. And you can see that now the console is empty. So what happened here was that it checked the condition. A is less than 10. And because A is 10, it's clearly not less than 10. The condition equated to false. And so it didn't run the code inside here. Now, why don't we make that condition true now? All I need to do is say, is a less than or equal to 10. In that case, this condition would be true, right? Let's press run. And then you can see it printed down here. All right, so that's really cool because now you can write code that can be run based on a condition. However, oftentimes we've got multiple choices that can be made. Like for example, do you want a Big Mac or do you want chicken McNuggets? So we're gonna do this using another feature of the if statement called an else if clause. Let me show you how that works. So right underneath the closing brace of your if statement, you can put the keyword else space if, and then you would have another condition then followed by another set of braces. Now what's going to happen here is that it's going to check your first condition in your if branch. If that happens to be false, it's going to skip right down and it's going to check the condition in your else if branch. If that also happens to be false, then it's just going to skip again and it's not going to do anything. 
However, if one of those conditions were true, then it would run that branch of code. And keep in mind, it's only ever going to run one branch of code. So imagine yourself standing in the middle of a uh, crossroads. There's two paths, one on your left and one on your right. There's only one path you can go down, right? So that's kind of like how the if statement works, except that it evaluates the conditions from top to the bottom. So the first condition that is true, it's going to run that block of code and then it's just going to ignore everything under that if statement. So let's jump back into the playground and let me show you how this works. So we can say something like, uh, let's make a 20 now, All right? So if we run this code right here, that's not going to run because it's false. Now we're going to use else space if space and let's say is a greater than um, 15. And right, then I'm going to print a is greater than 15. Right, so if you run this if statement, what would you expect to happen? It would evaluate this, right? And since that's false, it's going to skip down and it's gonna check this, which happens to be true, and it's gonna print that. So let's give that a run we've got a is greater than 15 printed down here. Now let me show you something else. What if a was five and then we change this condition like that. So this condition test is a less than or equal to 10 and this one is, is a less than 15. They're both true, right? I guess I'm gonna have to change this too or else it doesn't make sense. So that both of these conditions are true what would you expect to happen when I run my playground right here? Well, it evaluated this condition, which happened to be true. So it jumped into here, this fork of the road, right? And it executed that branch of code and it ignores everything else, right? It doesn't check the second condition at all. Uh, so that's really something to keep in mind. So another cool feature of the if statement is that you can stack these else if clauses. If you've got more things to check, more conditions to check, you can just add them to the bottom like that. So if A is greater than you know, 30, I'm just making stuff up at this point, but you can keep going and keep going. The only thing is that you don't want to make it too, too long. There is actually another kind of decision tree sort of structure that you can use, which I'll tell you in the next lesson. But in this one, just keep in mind that you can check multiple conditions, but you don't want to abuse it. Now, I want to tell you about this last feature of the if statement, which is the else clause. So the else clause is kind of like a catch all bucket. If none of the conditions at the top evaluate to true, it's going to keep checking from the top down, right? If none of the conditions above the else branch is true, then it's just going to end up executing the code inside of the else branch. So the way you include this else branch in your if statement is you use the else keyword and then you just open a set of braces. There's no need to specify a condition because remember the point of the else branch is to execute some code just in case nothing above it got executed. So let's jump back to the playground and take a look. So we've got a is less than 10, a is less than 15, and a is greater than 30. Well there's a gap right in between uh, 15 and 30. So if I said something like, you know, a is equal to 25 and I ran the code right here, nothing would execute because none of this is true. And let's just print something here. Print a is greater than 30. All right, so nothing gets executed right here. But if I add an else branch, right, open up a set of curly uh, brackets or braces here. Um, a is something else. So why don't we give that a run? And you can see that indeed it falls into uh, this catch all branch of code. So now I've shown you all of the basics of the if statement. However, it can get a lot more complex because your conditions inside your if and else if branches can get really complex. Let's say we introduce another variable here. Let b equals 10. You can start to chain these conditions together. So for example, if I wanted to check that a was less than 10 
and also that b is greater than five and I want both of these conditions to be true in order for that branch to be executed, I can use the double ampersand symbol, which represents that I want both of those conditions to be true in order uh, for that branch to be executed. So let's do b is, did I say greater than five or less than five? I think less than five. Um, and this actually would not be true, right? Because a is 25 and b is 10, so it's gonna skip here. So why don't we modify this a little bit? Why don't we say a is less than 10 and b is greater than five. So while this part is true, let me just run this and I'll show you what the output is, right? It still falls into here. Why? Well, although this is true, this is not true, right? And when you use this double ampersand sign right here, you're basically saying that you need both of those conditions to be true in order for the whole condition to be evaluated as true. However, if you don't care and you only want one of those conditions to be true, you know, either or, then you can use the or operator, which is actually a set of double pipes. Now, I don't know if they're called pipes, but this key is on, on my keyboard at least, is uh, above the return key, and you have to hold shift to get them. So double pipes will give you the or operator. And let me run this code to show you what that looks like. So we come into here and execute this. Now this, this statement is a little bit misleading now. So I'm just gonna call it branch one, branch two, branch three, and uh, let's say, let's say catch all. All right, so I can run that and show you that this gets printed. Because we're using the or operator, either if either a is less than 10 or b is greater than five, then we're good. We're gonna execute that branch. And that's exactly what we get here, branch one. Now, I'm going to blow your mind further because we can further chain these things. So what you can do is you can wrap this condition, right, in a pair of parentheses like this. And then you can say, and let's say, We've got a third one. And let's say we want either B is greater than five or A is less than 10. And, you know, C is equal to one, right? And if we run that, it would come into here because this part evaluates to true and this also evaluates to true. Now we can even go further and we can start wrapping that in a pair of parentheses and you can test as many things as you want and you can build this massive condition, but just keep in mind that the more things you put in there, the more complicated it's gonna get and the harder it is for anyone to understand. I wanna draw your attention to one thing though and that is this um, equality operator here. When we're testing equality, we don't use the single equals uh, operator here, because remember that's for assignment. When you do that, you're trying to assign one into the constant C. When you want to test for equality, you use double equal sign. And you, when you want to test for inequality, you can use uh, exclamation mark equals, and that is testing that C is not equal to one. So if I run this code right here, I, I would get catch all. Reason is because although this evaluates to true, this does not evaluate to true. And because we're using the uh, end operator there, we need both sides of that to be true. Now if I change this to an or and I ran it, we would get branch one. Because even though this isn't true, this is true. So it's kind of, a little bit of logic there, which is fun to do, and it takes a little bit of practice to wrap your head around. Now, what I wouldn't do, I highly, highly recommend that you do not do this, is don't memorize these keywords. Don't go and try to memorize, oh, I need the if keyword, I need a condition, here are all the operators I can use. Don't do that because I'm gonna introduce more keywords to you and more 
uh, syntax to you and it's not going to be fun for you to try to memorize it and it's not practical. I talk all about being practical and what I want you to do instead is spend 30 minutes. Um, take a look at the worksheet for this lesson. Um, try out the if statement on yourself on a playground and in 30 minutes of learning, you're going to learn a lot more and it's going to sink into your head a lot more. You're going to remember it a lot more than it would if you had tried to memorize this. So I highly recommend that you do instead of trying to memorize. Remember, I have a swift cheat sheet and worksheets for you to practice what you've learned in today's lesson. And I highly recommend you go through that because I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did when I first started. Now let's do a quick recap. You learned that you can use the if statement in order to execute code based on a condition. You also learn that you can use the else if clause to specify alternative branches of code to run based on other conditions. And finally, you have the else clause to run some code if all of the conditions above it are not met. Now, one key thing to remember is that the conditions will be checked from top down. And the first condition that is true, that's the branch of code that is going to be executed and the rest of your if statement is going to be ignored. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button below to support the channel. All right, great job on this lesson. Just click over to the next one and we'll talk there.